Welcome to Slash Tracks, episode two, Freddy's Dead. Tonight, as always, I'm joined by Alex Vanover. Alex, would you like to introduce our special guest? Uh, yeah, this is Paige from Elm Street Radio. Uh, she's a big time movie uh, maker right now, and she's sporting one of the coolest Freddy's gloves, the, the glove from Dream Warriors. I mean, how are you doing, Paige? Finish. I'm good. How are you guys doing? Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm so excited. Thanks for coming. It's going to be so much fun. I'm, gonna, I'm putting on my glove right now. <laughs> I am. Um, how fitting is it that I'm putting this on and we're watching Freddie is Dead? But yeah, I was just telling these guys earlier that this is my um, Brian Sills glove that he made for me. Um, he also made our glove for Fred Heads. So in the opening of Fred Heads, we have a glove that's featured and autographed by Robert. And when we had our Kickstarter, um, someone donated and bid on the glove. And so they get the like only glove in existence that's in our documentary. So it's like super cool. But I love gloves. Uh, those I, love this. Awesome. <laughs> I, no. I thought I had a good glove and it's already falling apart on me. So. <laughs> Freddie was like kind of phoning it in that day when he was putting that glove together. Yeah. He's like, this glove is being a real bitch. I can't put this thing together quick enough. <laughs> No, we're gonna we're gonna watch what a lot of people call the worst Freddy movie in the series. Uh, I think it's still a lot of fun. Um, what are your guys' thoughts on uh, Freddy's Dead? Paige, what do you think? So What's from, your opinion? I, I love Freddy's Dead. I I used to hate it. I used to think it was the worst. I used to be like, why did they not continue Alice and um, Alice and Jacob's storyline? And I know that like the the real behind it, the scenes is that John Doe actually is Jacob from part five. And when Rachel Talalay redid the script, she just took the name out of that part. So if you know the original script and have read the original script that this is actually based on, you know that this is actually supposed to be Jacob from part five. So that's the tie in that it was, but I am, um, over the past couple of years, I really have learned to love Freddy's Dead. It's one of those popcorn flicks. It's what you could just pop in and watch, and it's mindless. You don't have to worry about it. Um, you don't have to pay attention to it. It can be on in the background, and it's it's funny. It's I, I love it. What do you guys think? What do you think about it, Alex? Uh, I well, Josh and I. The reason we're, one of, one of the reasons we're doing this movie is because when we first were getting to know each other, I had said in passing conversation that this was one of my favorite in the franchise. And I am a huge fan of Dream Warriors. I always have been. But for some reason, I just feel like the the whole youth center aspect reminds me so much of Dream Warriors at times that, um, especially with Tracy and Carlos, those two characters mm-hmm. could be dropped into Dream Warriors, I think, and just fit right in. Um I just, I love that little tie-in right there. Uh, It's got a really good feel. And I also just, Freddy's really dark uh, in certain parts of this movie. I mean, he's very cartoonish most of the Mm -hmm. film. But when he's dark in this film, when he's messing with Tracy in that old house, he's dark. I mean, that's got major undertones of some serious stuff. It's a very twisted scene. Yes. um, And I, that house, this is kind of personal for me. I grew up um, in and out of my grandparents' house, and I, when my mom finally did get a house, we lived in this really shitty white house on the main street of our town, so I couldn't hide from anybody I went to school with. They knew, like, when I was walking to school, there's Alex going to this terrible little white house on the side of the road or whatever, so I remember going inside of that house in days where there was no food or my mom was passed out in the back. This is, this is a true story. So when I saw that, I was like, oh, my God, this reminds me of my childhood so much. So it made it scarier to me because it was very real. So I, I'm, this movie's near and dear to me, too. Plus, this is one of the movies I got to watch for the first time in sixth grade in the series uh, on a sleepover. So it left a huge mark on me. I think that's why the Nightmare on Elm Street series as a whole stands out from the different slasher um, series. Like to me, like this isn't a slasher film. It's not a slasher genre. It started with a very intellectual film from Wes Craven. But I think that as the sequels have evolved, there is 
a character or a version of the film for everybody. Everybody relates specifically to a certain film. That's why a lot of people like Dream Warriors or a lot of people like Dream Master or people who relate to Freddy's Revenge or people who relate to the original or Dream Master because it's almost like the films evolved over time and you will be able to find somebody that you connect with in, in anywhere in this series because it's youth and it represents real youth and real struggles. And to me, that's why I love this film. That's why I can't ever be like, oh, this one's my least favorite or, oh, I don't like this one. I hate this film. I feel like because they all just collectively work and I hate when people try to order or rank the films because it's like, just love the film for what it is and appreciate it for what it is. And I love that you have a story that ties you to this film. Oh yeah. Story, Alex. Uh, um, you didn't list it on the, like what people's favorites are when you were listing some people relate to this one or that one. Uh, Alex thinks my favorite is, is a weird selection because my favorite Freddy movie technically isn't even Freddy. And that's new nightmare. Um, <laughs> Uh, I love New Nightmare, so uh, I thought it was uh, ahead of its time, uh, really entertaining, scary whenever it was supposed to be scary. As a kid, it terrified me, like the makeup, him opening his mouth up and everything. As far as Freddy's Dead goes, it's the first Freddy movie I ever saw as a kid. Um, so I think it, it kind of opened the door for me a little bit, because it wasn't like part one where he's all dark and everything, or part or New Nightmare where he's terrifying. It was... Uh, it was just the perfect movie to start with uh, being young and it really got me into it. Like I, I had just seen wizard of Oz for the first time. So I got the joke, you know, whenever he's on the, uh, on the broom and everything. So that was cool. I was like six years old. Um, when I saw it, uh, and my daughter, same thing. It was her first Freddie movie. She's like, she's only, she's about to be 11. She wants to be a special effects artist when she grows up. She's been dissecting horror movies since she was like two. Uh, she walked in when I was watching a movie uh, she asked them all Santa Claus for all the Chucky movies when she was four. Uh, she's really cool. Like she'll watch it and be like, that's a little person. That's a robot. Like she can tell you when they're doing all that. It's really awesome. Like she, her hero is Tom Savini. Uh, she that's loves awesome. Savini. You're yeah. raising her right. <laughs> My son absolutely hates scary movies and scary stuff, but you know, it's all right. Uh, it's just cool that her first Freddy movie was mine. Uh, so if there's something special about this movie for me, it was my first, uh, it might not be my favorite in the series, but I'm not going to rank them or whatever. Uh, I do enjoy it here on this though. We kind of, sometimes we do a little riffing, but like, mm -hmm. uh, Jason X was my favorite Jason movie. And that was our first episode. And like, like I said at the beginning, don't hate me, Jason X, you're my favorite movie, but I'm about to riff on you some, uh, <laughs> but yeah, this movie is definitely silly. You know, oh, I'm looking yeah. at it again. Um, got my, uh, I don't know how good they're going to show up on here, but I got my 3D glasses ready to go into the dreamscape. Oh, yeah. Too. We all three got ours. <laughs> what ones uh, do you guys have? Do you guys have the ones from the original screening, too? Yes. Look yes. at that. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Love it. When I was a I kid, those. they had this movie at the theater, and it was like, I remember um, Dream Child coming to the theater right behind my house, and my mom wouldn't let me go see it because I was six. And then Freddy's Dead came out in 91, and I was, I believe I was nine years old. And I, I was like, listen, mom's not going to let me go see this movie. So I'm talking to my older brother. I'm like, you need to go because you need to get those damn glasses <laughs> because I, if I can't go, I need to be able to have these glasses for when it does come out on tape. So I just need to be ready. And then he got, these aren't the ones he got me, but he did get me a pair and I was ready, but it didn't really work that well on VHS when the 3D came no. out. You know, that was a real bummer. Uh, I was bummed. That was my first taste of life not being everything <laughs> you think it's going to be when you're, you know, when you're growing up. I guess it's crazy. I, um, uh... I didn't see the 3D version until I got the VHS and DVD box set that came out later on, the like the definitive collection. Um, and I like watched it and it just didn't really translate. So I've only ever seen it in 3D once. And uh, it was it was not a good experience for oh, me. But, but I think this film is everyone's, a lot of people's first nightmare films. A lot of people were introduced to the series because this film was played a lot more 
on TV than the other films were because this one didn't have to be as heavily censored and it's more funny. So they were able to play it in certain markets like on a Saturday night or like a Sunday afternoon, um, particularly like around Halloween. So uh, we've found through doing like a bunch of interviews and stuff with people that this is the one that most people have seen the most for the first time. And I think that's why a lot of people connect with it. I gotta say, so many people call it the worst Freddy, but on my YouTube channel, I narrate all the out of print books that have ever been written about these slashers. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of them, I don't want to say the names. I don't want to call out a certain author, but uh, he says he has Freddy in the book, like 70% of the book. And it's like a 410 page book. And, and uh, <laughs> Freddy says, bitch, I think about 120 times. And it takes all this, all the bad about Freddie and he just like throws it out there. Like I've read, I've narrated like 13 out of print Freddie books wow. and some of them would have made amazing movies. Uh, and some of them make you appreciate the movies even more, even the ones you might not have liked as much as the other ones. Uh, so yeah, Freddie's yeah. dead nowhere near the bottom of the barrel. So I don't, I don't really understand. It's never been my favorite, but I've never hated. I've always loved any Freddie movie. So. See, to me, I, if I'm going to rank them, I would say Freddy versus Jason is my least favorite out of all of them. Like, it's, I'm sorry, like, it, I, I recently watched it again for the second time, and it was okay, but it just doesn't have, like, the nightmare essence, I guess. It's very much a Jason film for me, and I'm not a Jason fan, and so for me, like, if you're going to rank them, like, that would be the worst, but I don't know, they're all good. <laughs> Freddy gets one kill movie, you know, That's and I understand, I, yeah, I understand he's supposed to get, be getting fed up with Jason and stuff, getting all the kills, but that always irked me that mm -hmm. that he didn't get a bunch of cool Freddy kills and that Kane Hodder wasn't cast as Jason, uh, just always ruined that movie for me. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do a timeout here for a second. My earbuds have got up and walked away on me. Oh no. Oh, they fell down. That Sorry. background is pretty sick, Josh. That Freddy's Dead mm -hmm. poster you got behind you. Thanks. I did the black and white because it uh, ends up looking better behind me. It's just like a built-in green screen thing. That's why I keep glitching here. Looks like Freddy's just about to rub your temples and you know try to get you to take a little nap tonight. So, Oh, there you go. <laughs> All right, so... Y'all ready to watch some Freddy's Dead? You bet. I'm ready when you guys are. Okay, we'll do a countdown here. Uh, three, two, and anybody listening at home, watching at home, when we say go, start your uh, copy of Freddy's Dead. So, three, two, one, go. Now reading. It's starting right now, yeah. I'm in the black screen. Me too. I'm on the do box. Yep. That's where I'm at. How about a little Goo Goo Dolls for you guys, huh? Yes. This have, this film has the best soundtrack. Yeah, it does. Uh, I, this was my first introduction. This is way before Iris to the Goo Goo Dolls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I love the quote. The quote by Frederick Nietzsche that's about to be on screen. And the second quote's not too bad either. Yeah, the second quote. <laughs> Is mine too loud for you guys? No. Okay, cool. No, but when I started, I had my headphones all the way up, so it, like, blew my... <laughs> How about Rachel, Rachel working her way up from a PA all the way to directing one of the movies? Yeah. I actually just posted about this. I feel like she does not get the love that she deserves for it. I feel like she's such a pioneer in the horror industry that people don't give her the appreciation that she deserves. Without Rachel Talalay, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be able to direct films. She was such a pioneer. You know, not many women directed horror films at that time. And she just doesn't get the credit that she deserves. She went from a PA to a director in six films. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, I really, I really enjoy the story here too, that all the kids are dead, you know? And as a parent, 
seeing the parents later on when they're wandering around the carnival and stuff, it mm -hmm. would just drive you crazy, you know, losing losing all your kids. And so that's that's a, it's actually a pretty dark storyline. Yeah. And this I think is my also... parents would have been okay with it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Listen, you've got a new family that loves you. You yeah. got you got you got all of us. <laughs> this is also the first in the series that actually established um, the Springwoods in Ohio, because up until this film, it was always just in the Midwest. It was never specifically stated Ohio, but they did this to honor Wes Craven. One of the books put it in California. I was like, oh, I don't think you've ever watched a Freddy movie. Yeah. Wasn't Divine supposed to be the lady next to him in the chair on this plane? Yeah. And that's because Rachel Talalay had just gotten off of Crybaby and with John Waters. And so um, she had a lot of, like, connections in that whole world. And they thought, how cool would it be to have Divine be in there? This is supposed to be the John Waters version of A Nightmare on Elm Street, essentially. I can see that. And they took one of the most terrifying things that most people do, flying, and threw that mm -hmm. at you first. I love it. <laughs> I had never been on a plane before, and this is what terrified me. So I didn't go on a plane until I was in my 20s because of this movie. I love takeoff and landing. It's the in-between part I don't care for. Yeah. <laughs> we went to yeah. Hawaii when I graduated, and we had to, to fly from each island. You go on these little planes called puddle jumpers. And the only time it doesn't have turbulence is basically when you're taking off. <laughs> That's it. Every the whole no. the whole ride is shaking. It was horrible. Uh, you talking about the one with the engines on the back instead of the wings? <laughs> it was the one. It was the plane from Rundown where the rocks flying into Brazil. And he's like, "Was that duct duct tape on the wing? What is that?" <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, here we go. Love it. You know, after Freddie's been oh, doing this a while, he's he would have to come up with interesting things. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's bad. So if I start quoting this movie, I apologize. I I pretty much know all the films word for word. So sometimes I don't even realize I'm doing it. And my husband, like, I swear it drives him crazy. Because I'm always like, I ruined a movie. I'm so sorry. Like, I just will act out or quote out the whole scene. This is literally yeah, the best the Rocky part. Horror treatment. Yes. Come on, this is the best part. It is. Little soul, dude. Yeah. <clears throat> He's a master of his craft, man. He seriously <laughs> is totally yeah. taking it to another level with this one. What about these special effects for a movie in the er in the really early nineties? Mm -hmm. um, and and on the they didn't have a huge budget, so I mean, great job on that. I see movies nowadays that don't look as good as some of these shots do. I think a lot of it, too, is because they use a lot of practical effects. And so um, anytime you can use practical effects over CGI, it just works so much better. So, like, even, like, the house and stuff like that, like, it's not a digital house. It's, like, a small-scale house that they're using, like, Breckenmeyer. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw his name on her. He's the one celebrity that I do want to meet from the film series that I haven't met yet. Breck and Meyer got typecast basically in the early 90s playing the same character in everything. The first thing I ever saw him in was Wonder Years where Paul and Kevin go camping with him and they're listening to the doors and smoking weed and it's Breck and Meyer who like <laughs> introduces them to it and then he was in Freddy's Dead a couple years later but he was like the same character. And then in Clueless. He yeah. Was the stoner in Clueless, yeah. And then he was in The Craft too like a little bit later. He was like the yes, same yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. In every here's, movie. Here's the worst shot in any Nightmare on Elm Street film, though. <laughs> the consistent falling down the hill. Like, how big is this hill? Gee, it, he's getting pulled with wires or Look something. At, Look at uh, that. He's got dizzy he's gonna, for a minute. He's going to get to a point where he kicks himself off. You'll see. It. It's hilarious. <laughs> So, like, he's coming to the bottom right now. Oh, look at Now he starts to kick himself off. He's going to start throwing himself off the side. Look at yep. it. It does feel like a dream, though, you know, stuff that never yeah. ends. So, I love the I love the dubbed-in screaming, though. Like, yeah. whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So if this was Jacob, where is Alice? Where did she like? Did she get taken out? Is that what like? If that was the original, script, yeah. So the, the original script was Jacob was on the run. He was taken away from Alice and put into a home, and so then he was on the run. And when he gets into this like group home, that's all the characters like Tracy and Spencer and Carlos and stuff. Um, this scared the crap out of me as a kid. Bob the, Shay's got to make Bob his cameo. cameo, but Bob Shay's cameo scared the crap out of me when I first saw this. When I first saw this, my parents rented it for me, and we put it in, and it was late at night, and I woke them up screaming because I was petrified from this scene, and they ripped it out of the VHS and said, you're never watching A Nightmare on the Street again. (laughs) And I was like, this whole thing. I don't think that took. No, not at all. Um, But no, so originally, that's what they were supposed to be. So Alice, uh, originally Alice's character gets killed off, and so... You know, they changed it to this instead and instead had him be a John Doe. You know, Alice and Jacob have popped up. And sorry, Alex, here I go again talking about the books. But (laughs) Mm -hmm. uh, Alice and Jacob have popped up in three different original Freddy stories. Like a whole book. is There's one of them called Perchance to Dream. The whole story is about Jacob. And uh, there's a short story in the Freddy Krueger Seven Sweetest Dreams that stars Alice and Jacob. It picks up like right after the, uh, the dream child, too. There's also the comic books that um, New Line Cinema hired when Freddy's Dead came out. They hired uh, Innovation Comics to create a canon comic book story to fill the gap of what happened. And in it is Alice and Jacob. They also have Nancy in it, too. The original concept for this film was this was supposed to be Jacob. And he goes to this group home because of Alice. And in it, the Dream Warriors come and save him and help them. And Jennifer Rubin, Ira Hayden, and Ken Sagos, um, not Ken Sagos, uh, Ron, Rodney Eastman, they were all reprised to return to their roles. And they were going to be dressed as the Dream Warriors. That um, would have been amazing. If, hindsight, you know, but hindsight's twenty twenty. If they could go back, I'm sure they would have made that film. Ken Segos, I know you said he wasn't in it, but he is. The, he could have his own pre, like pre equal. He could have a standalone yeah. film where he's just whipping people's asses at Springwood High School, and I'd watch it. Yeah, <laughs> him and his dog Jason could just be. He, that could be his sidekick. He could just be whooping ass all over Springwood. Yeah, I do love the concept of Freddie throwing him back in there, throwing him out there to uh, bring back some more, uh, some more souls for him. Mm-hmm. He put a lot of eggs in that John Doe basket, uh, Josh. Yeah, he sure like, did. What if John Doe like ha- you know has a heart attack from all the stress from falling down an infinite hill? <laughs> Plans over. Freddy's just fucked. He's just stuck in Springwood. That's <laughs> it. Guess he could have always tried to get Roseanne to do it for him. <laughs> yeah, he's all t- he's trying to get Roseanne and Tom to have another child. He's like, come on, bitch. <laughs> you guys know who this guy is supposed to be, right? No. Ooh. On screen, that's supposed to be Donald Trump. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> It's going to be that's a huge look, nightmare. I know. That's why he looks just like him and acts like that. <laughs> now I'm rooting against his son. That's Donald right. Trump Jr. <laughs> it's, it's the best character in all the Freddy movies by far. Everybody <laughs> said it's the greatest. <laughs> the greatest supporting character ever. Ask anybody. I love it. Lisa Zane on the I'm going on the record here when I was like nine years old I wasn't quite sure you know that I that I knew what girls were yet but I (laughs) when I saw Lisa Zane I was like okay I'm kind of interested in her character like she she intrigued me for the like the first time a girl had ever like caught my attention in a movie at that age when I first saw the tv show uh uh Lois and Clark I thought that she was Lois I thought it was the same woman Terry I did too yeah I thought the same thing I totally thought that she was the character in Lois and Clark when I was little. Yep. I can see that. She's so exotic and she is so freaking nice in person. Like she is one of the nicest people and so appreciative. She doesn't get, she didn't get the fandom at all. When she found out about it, she was like super excited. She was like, I didn't know that there were people who dressed up in my character and ran around. And <laughs> we're like, yeah. <laughs> that is cool. Thank you. Oh, man. John Doe's just having a really rough day here, guys. (laughs) Yeah. 
I mean, what is he taking out of the thing and eating? Freddie left it for him, I think. Like, did Freddie <clears> give <throat> him, cra- like, here, Freddie gave him crack cocaine. He's, like, taking a hit of it. Like, <laughs> he's, like, he's like, get this out of town for me while you're at it. Uh, right. He's like, pull this out of Taryn's dream, you bitch. You're going right. to get up with this guy named Jason, and he's going to give you some cash. Yes. <laughs> Don't Carlos, I didn't realize that Carlos was the same guy in Back to the Future. Mm-hmm. He's in the gang in part two next to the fountain, like to the fountain, you know? Really? Uh, I didn't know that was the same guy until years later. God, his death is so memorable. That's like the, the main one I remember. Really? The Q-tip and everything. Oh, my God. I used to have ear infections all the time. I had two sets of ear, uh, of, uh, what are they called? I can't even remember what they're called now. Tubes in my ear. Oh, okay. I was like even four years old. And uh, so that part always had ear infections. And I would, that part always got me. My girlfriend, Nicole, had to have tubes in her ears when she was a child. So like whenever we're like messing around or we're having a water, like during the summer, we'll have like water fights or whatever. And she'll always be like, don't hit my ears. You know, you know better. You're a piece of. <laughs> and she had tubes, that, you know, when she was six. I think a lot of that stuff like messes you up, you know. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, I never had to have tubes in my ears, but my nephew had to have tubes in his ears, and it's the same. Like, even when he goes into a pool, like the pressure from the water underneath like messes with him. Flying hurts my ears so bad. Yeah. I'm losing my voice currently too, so if I have to clear my throat, I apologize. I uh, okay. put out a really long narration earlier today, and it just. Uh, took my voice away. Yeah, yeah she, she does look water. like Terry Hatcher. She really does. Yeah. She's wearing the Terry Hatcher outfit from Lois and Clark from season one right there, man. <laughs> right. Did you did you notice the three D glasses on the desk a second ago? Whenever it was no. painting by the desk. They're in the background like this. They're like this in a bowl, like out of a thing. Yeah. Okay, hold on one second. So, okay, Doc, Doc, his name is Doc. He just had, mm-hmm. the Doc happens to have the poster of the Dream Demons that yes. created yeah. Where the hell was Doc in the previous installments? We could have used this information earlier, Doc. Because that's, that's the answer to any of those kind of questions. He's been doing some serious research, man. I feel like more people could have died in this movie, though. Yeah. Tracy. It's not death heavy. No. Tracy's one of those characters that I know they say it in Never Sleep Again, but like she survives this film and she should have died like four different times in that movie. (laughs) Right. Yeah. John Doe, good lord. Feel so bad for him whenever he finds out he's wrong. Yes. Oh, it's like such a sad moment where it's like, no, mm -mm. you're not (laughs) him. Sorry. And we don't get we don't get to stay sad long because we get the whole Looney Tunes thing. Yeah. <laughs> John needs to take one of those twenties from his pocket and go down to the laundromat and wash that shirt. Yeah, or buy some shampoo. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's hell on the costume people. I bet. Like ninety nine cent shampoo. Come on. Lisa Lisa Zane looks like a giant <laughs> compared to John Doe here. <laughs> he looks so tiny. He's a mini dream warrior. I love Sean in real life. I love Sean, but he is very short. <laughs> no, it's just, you know how, like, I you'll watch documentaries and it's like, well, Stallone gets shot, you know, from down, so he looks taller. And it's yeah. like, I don't think they could make him look taller because no. he just, I, I'm not making fun of him. I'm just saying he just looks short. Kind of looks like Ryder Strong, like he's going to go see Mr. Mm. Feeney in a minute. Oh, or my God. Boy, <clears throat> yeah. the world. So, uh, favorite final girl or guy from the series? That's that's easy. I mean, uh, Nancy Thompson. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Nancy <laughs> in a landslide. Not mine. Who? Oh, I'm going to end this call right now. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse. Oh, yeah. Oh. Jesse is. I like Jesse. Okay. Have you seen Screen Queen? Yes. The docket? That's yes. awesome. Yeah, awesome, awesome documentary. Loved it. That was a great documentary. The scene that bothered me the most in that movie was when he couldn't be at the house when they were coming to 
like take photos for Vanity Fair or something for his uh, like his boyfriend was there and they're like, no, you got to get Mark's got to leave. And Mark's like, what the hell? My dogs are in the house. Like, I don't want to leave. Like, I felt horrible for him. Yeah. It's a really sad him. story. Like, that's what Hollywood was like in the 80s, you know? Bullshit. That is, it's bullshit. It's sad yeah. that, like, that whenever he finally got to sit down with the, with the writer and everything, I feel like the writer wasn't being genuine about everything. And he was just saying, I don't know. I, I, I wasn't satisfied with, with the writer's uh, behavior in that sit down. Well, I, I will, uh, so are you talking about um, Chastain or are you talking about Jack yeah. Holder? Okay, yeah, because I, that was like very intense for me to like watch because I was like, oh, this is it. This is the moment. Like he's, he's going to call him out essentially. And it was like a very uncomfortable moment. But the Jack Shoulder thing surprised me when he was having the conversation with Jack Shoulder. Um I'm oh, gonna, whatever. Told I'm him to like let it go and stuff or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that pissed me off too. Yeah. You know, I I'm gonna go on record and say that I am not a fan of Jack Shoulder, and we have had him on her our show, and I openly talk about the fact that um, I'm not a fan of him, and I think he's a creep. And he uh, even on our show talked about some subjects that I was then messaging D and was like. I, I want to wrap this up. I want to wrap yeah. our conversation up. He was talking about um, how he doesn't respect Wes Craven and he didn't respect what Wes did. And he felt like he didn't have to do the same film as him. And he just felt like altogether the original film wasn't that great. And all he did was like bag on a Nightmare on Elm Street. But then he talked about how like he got into being a director so that way he could sleep with women on set. And yeah, and he said this on our show, like a podcast hosted by two women who are very vocal in like movement rights and stuff. And yeah. I was messaging, yeah, like an idiot. And I was like messaging yeah. her. I was like, I was like, get this asshole off of our show. I want nothing to do with him ever again. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, he's just. A- and then, and then afterwards, after we were done, he like asked DeAndre and I to like come hang out with him because I live in DC. And he was here, um, I guess, for the weekend. And he's like, and Dee was going to be here. And he's like, you guys should come and, and have dinner with me. And like, really like creepy. And we were like, okay, yeah, uh-huh, sure. And we got off. We were like, that was the weirdest fucking interview we have ever done. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, so I hate it. So I'm not a fan of Jack Shoulder. I've never been a Jack, Sh- been Jack Shoulder fan. Like, And it sucks because I love part two. Part two is such a good film. And I don't know if I love it because I love Mark Patton and I love like Robert Ruffler, like the two of them together are just amazing and they've been amazing to us as well too. And so I don't know if that's why I love it more, but. I but, always yeah. thought it was a great movie. It's got one of the most memorable parts in it. The whole, you got the body, I got the brain. It has most like, memorable lines. Like you yeah. are all my children now. Yeah. Like, you know. You've his got the makeup, body the brain. his makeup in that movie is on point. It is perfect. They reveal just enough of Freddy throughout that film, except for the swimming pool scene. Um, every scene is like he's kind of in the shadows. Uh, his he looks like the perfect mix of like he's he's sixty percent you know in focus. It's he's ju- he's scary enough without saying anything. Yeah. Great. Okay, John Doe's. This is really weird but his like his ear is just bugging the hell out of me <laughs> i have John, no idea why his, I mean, his ear his ear looks like the ear of the guy in buffy the vampire slayer the movie yes! from 92 remember the first uh guy who becomes he's in uh days to confuse Bye. yeah he, he, <laughs> yes. he becomes a vampire and their ears go like this he reminds me of in. that character yes, <laughs> yes. that's him yeah uh-oh. I haven't watched right this there. in a while, now, but he's really good. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, now I'm going to be distracted by his ear the whole time. I told you, it looks like <laughs> the guy from Buffy. You were saying you haven't watched this film in a long time. Oh, no, not in a long time, just in a while. I forgot how much this dude looks like freaking Sean from Sean Hunter from Boy Meets World. <laughs> mm-hmm. Writer strong man. He he had a little a little. He dipped his toes into the horror film water a little bit with uh, uh, Cabin in the Woods or not Cabin in the Woods with Cabin Fever. Cabin Fever. Yeah, mm-hmm. The original Cabin Fever. Yeah. Can't believe there's already a remake of that. 
it's on Netflix. It went straight to DVD. I was watching that at my brother's house, so my brother kind of likes horror movies. And he was like, we're going to watch this. We might as well just put the actual one in because this is making me sick. He did part two. He went and filmed like just one scene to get splattered by a semi-truck. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. The Boy Meets World residual checks just aren't as big as they used to be anymore. So he was like, all right, well, you know, seven, you know. He got the Whatever. sequel series there for a while, but he only he was only on that a little bit, and they like really watered it down. It's a Disney thing. Yeah, I this think is... that the sequel series was horrible. Oh man, this is what a town fair looks like now that COVID has taken over the United States. Yes, oh, it's so sad. <laughs> Look at this. This is one of my favorite scenes in the movie. Me too. Because uh, these parents have just lost everything. They have like no. It's, and the way they the way they act with other seeing other kids and stuff is just so sad. This is like the start of my favorite part of the movie, where like they get here, you see all of this, and then when they get in the van and they're circling around and they're in that time loop, I love it. Like this film, like okay, right here, do you see that pizza with the cockroaches and stuff? Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize that this film pays homage to a lot of the older films. So like the pizza and the cockroach thing, that's from part four. Like, so he has, like, the Freddy Souls pizza that he stabs into, and then Debbie gets killed as a cockroach. Like, there there are things that are intentionally put in this film that do call back to the other one, and that's what I love, is this scene, like, starts that all and kicks that all off. There we go. Pro Sam just peeking into the film room. I can tell what season of Roseanne she was filming. I you yeah. can even tell. Don't even tell me the year that this movie was made. I don't know. It's ninety one. That's season three Roseanne right there. <laughs> right for sure. It's just the one where she worked at the cafe. Yeah, inside for, um, the mall. Yes. Well, yeah. um, and, <laughs> Leon. Uh, Leon was the Leon mom. was great. <laughs> <laughs> I love Roseanne, and this is totally not right to say. But The Connors without Roseanne is horrible. I don't know if you guys have watched The Connors. Yes. Oh, you're about to hate me because yeah. I love The Connors. But... No, I love The Connors too. But without it's Roseanne, not it's just, it's not the same. Like the first season of the Roseanne reboot was so good because I felt like, I don't know. It just was so good. It was like, it was a callback to what the original was. They didn't play it safe. They thought it was funny. They went, they went there on the jokes on both sides. And the Connors, like, I love the Connors, but it just feels like it's missing yeah. something. It's missing Roseanne. And I don't want Dan to be with Peggy Bundy. So. <laughs> what, she's like the go-to for, like, she's like the uh, Ted McGinley for sitcoms nowadays. Like, I love Sons of Anarchy. She was amazing on Sons of Anarchy. Sons of Anarchy was so good. And they're doing the prequel series, too, um, about... Uh, the Lines. Jax Teller's dad. I can't but no, oh, what was Jax Teller? Oh, gotcha. Yeah, they're yeah, gonna do yeah. the prequel. I'm excited for that. Like I can't wait until I get to that. Like I instead of the seasons of the year for me, it's like the what shows me my binge watching again. Like yeah. Breaking Bad, uh, Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> So Maggie gives them the keys, right? So where are they? Does she just want them to go back to the youth shelter? How are they getting? How is Maggie and John Doe getting back right. to the youth center? Because what's that all about? They're just trying to get their cardio in. They can make sure they get the steps, <laughs> you know, for the day. It's part of the rehabilitation, man. <laughs> yeah, just John Doe, you've really pissed me off. You're problem solving ten miles home. And like, okay, so you're giving three teenagers who are in trouble and escaped from the thing keys to a van and are trusting them to go back. Yeah, for Makes sure. It's like perfectly okay. good sense to me. I don't know what you guys are smoking, but that makes <laughs> perfect sense to me. It's whatever Spencer smoking. Cause... Ear, ear, God. The half the budget for the movie was spent on sidewalk chalk. <laughs> <laughs> they hired the part, the girl from part four to come and redraw her drawing. So the there's a key person in. sees that and like has to go and fill in the rest of the rhyme. Yeah. There's this field in Eugene, the town I live in, and it's an old baseball field. And I'm not even kidding. The 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 infield is red rock. And the grass around it is really dark green. So I, whenever I drive by it, I'm like, there's the Freddy field. And 
I actually like tagged Deandra in it one time a picture as I was like taking it and she's like, Oh my god, that is a fucking Freddy <laughs> looks like Freddie's field. Like if he played baseball, that's where he's played. That's awesome. I love this. This whole scene. Oh, I love it. Yes. The map says you're fucked. <laughs> You're Coincidentally, fucked. I can't read a map, so that's what it looks like every time I try to read a map. Yep. <laughs> they still make maps? Yes, they do. I'm joking, of course. They do. I, wonder how I didn't think they did. Seen one. <laughs> I didn't think they did. I thought everything was still digital, and I moved to D.C., and my mother-in-law was like, here's a map to like get around. <laughs> like, like, I love you, but I have GPS. Like, <laughs> You guys ever had looping dreams before where you keep looping the same thing? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes See, I, 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 I can do lucid dreaming sometimes, and when stuff like that happens, it freaks the hell out of me because it's like Freddy. Mm. I'm like, wait, is this really happening? Damn it. I've never had a looping dream, but I always have dreams that I'm lost and that like I'm trapped in a hotel or some sort of building that's a maze, and I'm like constantly going, but it never loops like the same area. What about a dream within a dream? You ever had oh, yeah. that? Yeah. That's happened. Yeah. That drives me nuts because I'll swear I'm awake. And, uh, because then when you wake up, you're like, am I really awake or is yeah, this yeah, a dream? Yeah. For a second, you have to clear your head. I love this whole part. I love when he tells the, like, the Freddie rhyme. I always thought it would have been cool if they would have put, like, photos of kids from the films before. Yes. And yes. Then. Yes. Absolutely. I'm not going to lie. If this was offered when I went to school, I probably would have taken this as an elective. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you taking, Alex? You taking uh, team sports, home ec? No, I'm taking Fred Freddy 101, bitch. Slasherology. Oh. Introduction to Kruger. <laughs> I know a slasher librarian. Yeah, so do I, actually. Josh, the first Freddy book I heard you read to me when you didn't know you were reading to me late at night while I was playing Super Nintendo was uh, The Dream Dealers. And that favorite. one that one could be a good movie. That would be oh, a yeah. good film. Easily. The uh, Jason, or Jason, uh, Freddy, uh, there's this new virtual reality system where you can relive people's dreams and their memories. And this guy uses dreams and memories from dead people freddy victims without realizing it oh and so freddy's about to go global so when people relive these dreams freddy is really in them and like he can change it like people are freaking out because it's supposed to be the same thing every time but every person that does it it's a little bit different and as freddy gets his power they start dying and getting hurt and uh it comes real close to him going global it's it's the stakes are huge in that book when we're done with this interview, you should send me the link to your channel and I'll have our um, social media team create a post on Fred Heads around it because that's really cool. Like, I didn't know that, like, you do the, the, the readings of the books. I don't even really know all what books are truly out there. I know some of them, um, but I didn't realize there was a vast amount of books on A Nightmare on Elm Street, like, stories that people have written. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, like I said, I've done like 15. Like, I've done the direct movie novelizations and the original ones. And uh, I've still got a, several more Freddy ones to go that I haven't finished yet. That's um, so awesome. We were going to do a live reading of Dream Warriors. We were going to do a Dream Warriors uh, reading. We were going to get a bunch of different people together from our team and in the community and stuff. But then just with editing our documentary, it's just, it's too much. So I don't know how you have time to, to read the whole script and, and record it. It's a lot. Like, plus still doing this podcast and other stuff. It's, I give I, you uh, props. I put out, what I do when I do a book is I put out like two or three chapters per upload. And at the end of each upload, I do like a little Joe Bob Briggs discussion of what I just read. And uh, that way people can look forward to the next set of chapters and so on. So I finish it. And uh, I leave up the playlist when I'm done. And I also make like an unabridged version for people that just want the whole thing. I love uh, that. But it's pretty cool. The Dream Dealers was my favorite because Freddy's like old and grizzled and kind of pissed in it. He's tired of being forgotten. That was a great effect right there. Oh, yeah. Uh, but when the doors so cool. blow out, it's almost like it's supposed to look like a toy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, 
Hey, like, there was this, there was the house we stood in front of in the thumbnail. That's, yep. that's, that's the image. That's the hero shot guys. Yeah. Like <clears throat> This movie doesn't waste a lot of time getting interesting either. Uh, it, no. it pretty much grabs you from the airplane. I think that's why I like it. I think it's because it's like, it's just constantly going. Like you don't, you can walk away from it and go do something else and come back and be like, oh, where am I at in the story? Like, it's <laughs> yeah. like, you can see like, oh, there's, there's always going to be something fun coming up. I do that with Never Sleep Again. I'll put that documentary on when I'm doing anything. And my friends think I'm crazy because it'll just be background noise. And I'll be like, oh, hey, that's when uh, they were designing the baby for, you know, Dream Warriors. It's like, and it, they're like, what? How the hell do you even know where you're at? <laughs> Always catch something I missed on that documentary every time I watch it. It was on Netflix for a really long time. And when I was, before I moved here from Chicago, it's an 11 and a half hour drive. I'd have to like make a couple trips throughout the year to like bring all my stuff. And I would watch that on the way here. And I would just listen to it as I was driving. And because it's a good thing that like gets you through four and a half hours of driving. But then you're like, I feel like it's like you said, like you constantly are learning something new every single time you watch it. Oh, here's your scene. Oh my God. Josh, I've slept, I've slept on worse beds than that. When I was in my partying days, I've slept on beds like that with no sheets. So Carlos <laughs> is lucky he has sheets. Little Alex's in America don't have sheets. He should be. <laughs> that made it very hard to bring girls home because it's like I'm trying to like pretend like I'm a gentleman back then. And it's like, hey, you know, come over to my apartment where I have no sheets <laughs> on my bed and there's no food. And like, we don't have to change them. <laughs> Listen, here's some advice from someone who used to be in their 20s. 20-year-old girls, when we are, like, going back to a guy's house to hang out, we know what we're going back for. <laughs> so, uh, we know, like, that it's going to look like a frat house. We know it's not going to be, like, upscaled and designed. We know what we're getting into when it comes to going to a house. Listen, as long as you have a mattress and it's not on the floor, <laughs> girls in their bad. 20s are okay. <laughs> Yeah, this part used to freak me out, too. It's still really creepy. I can't, like, watch it when he's going through his ear. I'm looking it, over the side. It's so funny. Like, for somebody who does special effects, I can't watch special effects being done. It's so oh, weird. I looked. Uh... See, this is what I was talking about. This he, this is a really dark Freddy. This, this is the Freddy that I like wrong guy freddy yeah. cut the other guy's ear off damn it yeah i'd be cool with that i don't have to look at it i just still think it's super cool like even just these shots like this is not comedic to me like no. this is not this at is all dark you know i love oh. that mix of comedy and like scariness yeah even when he's being comedic in the kills it's dark you know yeah. Hell, even the video game thing is kind of dark if you think about it. <laughs> he's he's so confident in his skills at killing people in that video game scene that he doesn't even like notice that Tracy's coming in the door. He could give two shits. Yeah, he's he like, didn't even he didn't even have to be playing with power, man. <laughs> <laughs> he's the only one that figured out how to actually use the power glove. That thing was so hard to use. Retro Wii. God. See, Did we you were guys so see... poor that oh, we got, like, got we were so poor that we got the system, but then we never got any games or accessories for it. So we like got we were excited that we got like a Nintendo, but my sister and I like only had Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt, the like combination gift. We never got anything else from it. We would hear hearing... games, but we never got to buy them. <laughs> I would we wouldn't even be able to get to rent the game. That was deemed too expensive. I was like, Mom, you realize you're spending more money running these games? Oh gosh, Robert looks the best. I don't like mm -hmm. that Carlos at no point during this scene attempts to fight back. He just kind of takes it. Yeah, <laughs> he's a pacifist, man. I guess, dude. He's no, no, no willpower, no, no inner strength, man. Or he, he wouldn't just... last. Josh, he wouldn't last one month with me on the streets working out, man. He'd be done. <laughs> He might be into, you know, that sort of thing, you know, 
Maybe Freddy's just another mistress for him. Maybe. Uh. He didn't remember the safe word with Freddy? Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> he didn't hear it. <laughs> I love this part. Like, this oh, shows, yes. like, what an asshole Freddy really is. Yes. <laughs> no doubt. Forget that he was doing bad stuff to kids. He, this is... He's just like an asshole. Like, yes. I'm going to have fun torturing you. Like, I'm going to have fun with your death. You're going to die. Like, it's just going to happen, and we're going to make this fun. Well, Freddy's pretty stoked at this point uh, because now he's got more victims. I'm sure this was very exciting for him because his plan actually worked. He's also been using his vitamin E oil on his hand, as we can tell. No more burns <laughs> no from burns the previous there. five films. I always thought it'd be fun. Oh, God, I'll wait till the scene's over because this is just great. I love just the quiet and everything. It's. Oh. <laughs> 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 I don't know what to say about this. I just want to watch this scene. I know. I love it. I love how he's like. I love how he gets all into it and he's like. <gasps> Mm -hmm. Oh boy! Oh man! <laughs> metal Freddy's scraping metal is worse for me than nails on a chalkboard. Freddie scraped that almost like he was a DJ. <laughs> he went flop. Good man, fatality. <laughs> Meanwhile, it. back at the Hell House. Here. It's like, always where do the it... bodies go then? <laughs> I always thought it'd be funny if somebody pulled Freddy out of the dream world into the real world, and before he can do anything, he just starts screaming in pain from all the burns, mm -hmm. you know, and like the severed oh. nerves and everything. Very interesting. Oh, Jesus moment. Christ. I mean, because he would actually feel it. At yeah, that he's in the yeah. real world. He's human. I like that angle. That's pretty good. Breckenmeyer, man. That's the TV we had in our living room. Really? Oh, we had a we had a big ass wooden TV, and they used to put picture frames on top of it. Yeah, we had, had a box. Panel frame TV. Yeah. Yes. It's called a cabinet TV, I think, or something. Mm -hmm. It's like it's big wood, got knobs, had, had like had like three channels growing up. Yeah. <laughs> back back when when we were kids. Uh, do you remember when Nickelodeon would be on till like five o'clock and then A and E would come on at like five thirty? Do you guys remember that at all? They'd share mm -hmm. a channel. Yeah. yeah. Wild and crazy kids. I remember shows like that when I was a kid on Nickelodeon and oh, uh, Donnie Are You Jeff Afraid of the man? Dark. You can't do that on television. Roundhouse. <laughs> I was just talking about Roundhouse. Vegetarian loaf. Oh my Yesterday. god, I remember that show. Roundhouse just... was my favorite. Those kids were too handsome, too talented. Like everything about them was what I wasn't. So I was yes, just drawn to that me show. Too. Me too. Like oh my! I looked God. like I looked like Lori Beth Denberg from all that. So for me, like I was like, if I saw the Roundhouse cast, I was like, that's who I wanted to be versus the All That cast. So. <laughs> my kid had me watch a new All That, and she was on there. Yeah, Lori yeah, Beth is back. Yes, back. she is on the yeah. show. Yeah, and she's Cal, still hilarious. Cal is on the show too. You yeah. know him and Keenan tried out for SNL at the same time. I did know that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Keenan got it, and he asked that he didn't, that they didn't bring him on because he wants to be. He wanted to be separate from him for a long time. They actually didn't talk. The guy who plays, well, Kel. I mean, it's his real name, but he uh, he's from Chicago, and he like. He would do like interviews and stuff like that where he would say he like had mad love for Keenan, but like Keenan got famous and left him in the dust because they were partners. And Keenan wanted to just be separate from Keenan and Kyle. He wanted to be taken serious. Well, blame him. I know. I don't either. He's a lifer on SNL, I think. I don't think he's ever going to ever going to quit. He's that movie Heavyweights with that movie Heavyweights when we were growing up. 
He is so good in that movie. He's so good in Mighty Ducks too, the, with the knuckle puck and all that other crap. Yes. I love Keenan and Fat Albert because I was fat and I used to watch Fat Albert. And when he got the role of Fat Albert in 2004 ish, I was kind of like still pretty big. And I just love that movie when he wins the race at the mm-hmm. high school uh, race, you know, the 100 meters or whatever. And he's running in his freaking sweater. <laughs> Do you fat. what's your favorite Mighty Ducks? One, two or three? Two is yeah, my two. favorite. favorite. Yeah, two is my favorite. Yeah, I like two a lot. I don't even remember three. They're like in college or something, I think. Mm-hmm. They're not in college. They would go to a prep school. And oh, Emilio okay. Estevez initially said he would do the movie, but then something happened. So they, he's in the beginning of the film. That's why he's not their coach, and they go to the prep school. So oh. Emilio Estevez like got a production cre- like a producer credit, and Johnny they Gale. go. they're the JV team at a high school. So <laughs> that movie could have been so much better. The only thing about this film that annoys the crap out of me is that they have Johnny Depp in the screen and that their audience and everybody, <laughs> this is intended to be Johnny Depp when it's like, that's Glenn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, how is like how is the how is the horror community and when we saw this and even Rachel Talalay who worked on the first film, how do how is it not putting two and two together that this is Glenn. Like, yeah. don't use him as Johnny Depp. Use him as Glenn. Exactly. Put him, put him in the number 10 shirt that he's killed in. And like, oh, I always love this scene, though. This is a 3D moment here. Oh, mm. crap. Sure is. <laughs> oh, oh, is it okay. really? Oh, no, yeah. it's not. I, you don't you don't put on your 3Ds until. Oh, my God. Maybe, it actually is, though. It's worth but it. It's a, let me see. No, it. I'm just kidding. I just seen if y'all going to do it. I don't know. <laughs> when it was coming out of the TV, it looked kind of cool with the color, with the uh, red. That wasn't a three D moment. No, it's a, you don't put on the three D glasses until Maggie puts them on. When oh. Maggie puts them on is when you put them on. That's when in the theaters it had like the flashing. Put your three D glasses on. That would have been a perfect one, though. Yeah, they would have filmed it from the front instead of the side, though. They would have shown it from the front. Oh God. <laughs> This is what the Nightmare on Elm Street game should have been for Nintendo. <laughs> Instead of going around collecting his bones the entire damn game, this is what the game should have been. I used a thumbnail of him playing that for the, one of the Dream Dealer uploads. There was talk of them making a Dream Warriors game, like the Friday the 13th game for PS4. There was talk of them doing a Dream Warriors a couple of years ago. But then all the legal stuff happened with Friday the 13th, and I think that they just backed out of it. But... They were going to do a crowdfunding for it and everything. That would be the way to go for a Freddy game. Mm -hmm. Take the Dream Warrior aspect if you're going to do like a four versus one or six. Because you can design your own Dream Warrior. You can essentially design your own character. And then you could work alongside famous Dream Warriors like Heather, who probably, you know, she would have voiced it, you know, or, or Taryn. Or you could work alongside those people and you're just a mental patient in the hospital. Think how much fun that would have been. That would be amazing. And it would have great graphics, just like that game did. Great graphics. <laughs> I remember the bit days, man. Mm. It's got 16 bits. Yeah, well, mine's got 32 bits. <laughs> I don't even know what the my, hell a bit is. My grandpa used to call a quarter two bits. Really? <laughs> yes. Yeah, oh, what Atari yeah. had. 50 cents was four bits. My grandpa like was born in 1919, so he would literally... His dad lived to be like... 100 so his his he had firsthand stories from his father about like coming over here from missouri or something like on the oregon trail and oh i'd be like okay like that's <laughs> not crazy like oh my god i love his part great imagination i love when he goes and that's not normal <laughs> <laughs> Just so calmly and nonchalantly pointing out. What I love kind that they of make weed this house did he smoke? Right. <laughs> I know. And why have I never found any? I mean, he is whenever out like I smoke, yeah. I don't smoke anymore. Oh, I'm very pro marijuana. I'm very pro that. I'm not against it. I just can't ever find any. <laughs> oh, see, for us, it's legal here in D.C. They'll just deliver it right to your door. It's legal yeah, it's the next legal state over. There's a there's a place I could go. I guess I just 
at some point it'll be legal in the entire country. And when it does, that's when I'm going to be so excited. I'm actually, we're starting a business and I can't wait to like be able to like infuse like THC into it because I feel like that's going to, it has like medicinal purposes and it like really will help people. But I said, I will only ever do it when it's legal in the entire country. I think if I, if I was able to do that, more i think i would help me quit smoking cigarettes actually because mm-hmm. that's one thing i really really wish i could give up easily it's hard it's harder to quit smoking cigarettes than it is to do anything because it's readily available and it's so addictive yeah and if you can just get it it's legal so it's not like you're doing something illegal but it's it is a hard thing to quit I think marijuana would have been legal sooner if the government could have figured out an easy way to tax it. 100%. Hey, now he's playing with power, girl. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Josh, the the way to quit smoking, man, just like Doc says, concentration, meditation, man. They didn't even ask Nintendo. They just went with it here. Yes. And didn't they say they had the most sales in power gloves after this film came out? Too? Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. They should have designed one that looked like the Nightmare Power Glove. That would have been amazing. And made it compatible with the Freddy game. Right. Like, I'm totally down with that. As a matter of fact, let's just go back and talk to Bob today right now and see if we Did can. Did you know the Freddy <laughs> game for Nintendo was four player? I, you know what? I did know that. Yes, I did know that. A lot of people yes, don't I did. realize that. I didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't know it was a four-player game. Yeah. You can be four different. It's almost like the the Dream Warrior idea, but that you can't all be on the screen at the same time. Can you? you there's no four controller option, is there, Josh? You just sw- share the same controller. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's. Yeah, you don't you don't run around together, but there is yeah. a player mode. Oh wow, I didn't know that. I remember they used to have the attachment that you can create for you can plug in four controllers. I remember yeah. seeing that. For like different games that you could do, but yeah, multi tap. Yeah, that would have been a good spot for Glenn. Like if he had poured out of that TV with the blood, yeah. ready been like, I was wondering where I put that. <laughs> <laughs> wondering where that was. <laughs> Dude, so Freddie chose to feel nut pain right there because in his dreams he never really has pain, but he decided to go with it right there. He doesn't have to look burned, and he chooses that. <laughs> I always love this part. I love when, like, they take control. We're going to pick him up, and we're going to get the hell out of here. <laughs> now, stop like, when talking. The, when Heather says, fuck you. Like, I always love when, like, the the female character becomes, like, a badass in the film. Like, in part in West Craven's Nightmare, where he says, like, pick a pet for the rug rat. And she like punches him in the face. Like I always love when they like get into it. Like we're gonna do, we're gonna do this. We're gonna save the day. Uh, the scene where Alice is like basically has the Rambo moment in Dream Master, where she's like getting ready to like go, you know, fuck ready up. I still get goosebumps when I see that scene. It's such a good scene. Uh huh. It is fucking a. Mm hmm. She's she's fantastic. Lisa Wilk. She definitely deserved to be. In at least another, you know, one or two or three films. <laughs> yeah, she's the only we, final girl in the series to survive two films. I like her YouTube channel. When she was like posting uh, more frequently, she, her, and Dan like went to the water fountain and mm-hmm. like shot some scenes there, and then like went back to her house that you know was her house on film and stuff. I just thought that was really interesting. You guys have, if you haven't already, you guys have to go out to California because all of that stuff is within like a 20 minute radius of each other. And so you could go see the house and then go see all the the stuff. Like we went to the Rialto. It was super cool to like go and like see that and the fountain. And we even found, well, we're, we're friends with Heather. So Heather told us where to go, but um, we were in her studio hanging out and she's like, you guys have to go where we filmed the bar scene in Dream Warriors. And we're like, what? Like, wait. She's like, yeah. She goes, it's right around the corner. She's like, I'll tell you where. So she like wrote down the address for us, and we went. And it's like some Asian cuisine place now. So we're like, like we're too tired. We'll go in next time and get a drink. Um, but oh you guys gosh. have to. If you haven't been to like, California, you just have to go just to like see all these locations. Super I would cool. love to. And this is, this is probably, 
as goofy as it gets here, my favorite from the whole movie. Really? Yes. Uh, I, the Looney Tune thing is way over the top, but it's ready. It's fine with me. So, I love this. <laughs> I love the whole film. John Doe's nightmare is actually from chafing to death, so Freddy put him in a parachute <laughs> without a shirt on underneath. That's his nightmare. Like, this is going to be extremely uncomfortable later on. Thanks a lot, Fred. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Your daddy? <laughs> God, what an asshole, Fred. I bet they had a blast making this movie. Oh, my God. Robert England said in a bunch of interviews that he actually really enjoyed making this film because he liked the tone. Mm-hmm. You know, he, this was, a, he was having fun with it at that point. This gets a bad rap because it's like so funny. But like when you think about it, like part five was so serious. Mm-hmm. And I love part five, but it gets a lot of flack. Oh, I hate this part. I always feel so bad for John Doe. Right. But like where he does the, the Bugs Bunny thing, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> like he just needed to like wipe his brow and it would have been perfect oh yes take his hat um, off yeah but it's like the part five was so serious and that did so horrible if you're gonna do one more and you're gonna say goodbye to the series what's the next evolution that you're gonna do you know and so she tried something new with this she let's let's make it funny let's let's lean into what people love they love the pop culture freddy we're making pajamas for little kids and He's got an MTV show and he's got this and that. Like, let's lean into that and give the fans what they wanted. And now it's like, it gets a lot of flack, but it was highly successful at the time. And it's hilariously funny. It's also scary. I love how it progresses the story. I love that he has a a daughter. It's a good combination of, of the two things that made the Freddy series work. Right. I got to give it to Freddie, though, guys, because he seriously had a goal. He wrote it down. Uh, he took John Doe. He, he uh, used him as bait. Uh, he's, he's putting his plan into action, and it's starting to pay off. And I really yeah. respect a guy who can follow through on something. That is, uh, Freddie's a uh, A-OK in this film. And it only cost him, like, half a thing of crack cocaine. So <laughs> uh, yeah. he, did, he, he made out pretty good. God. <laughs> Nowadays, it costs a lot more souls to get that. So. Yes. I love this when they drive through this and it shatters. It's a mystery machine. Love the name. That's a, that's a cool effect. I had mm-hmm. forgotten about that. So, do they just sleep in the van? Mm-hmm. It's a mystery machine, man. How have you not gotten this yet? <laughs> Oh, man, I love that she like tells her she's like it's not your fault. Like yeah, bitch, it's not her fault <laughs> that you guys stole away in a van and came along. <laughs> like it would have just been John Doe who died. You're the one who like put yourself in the situation. Yeah, yeah. Technically, Tracy, you brought this on your entire <laughs> group of friends. Thanks a lot. Right. <laughs> your friends would be alive if you didn't want to escape. How does she even? get a sit down at this point you know like she left with with x amount of kids and comes back with you know half of them dead but they don't remember that yeah. that's the other thing too is uh, that yeah, yeah, and yeah. when and what what freddy film is there that they don't remember the kids and if they don't remember the kids then why is it the town still mourning the loss of their kids wouldn't they not remember them either like that's a huge plot twist and plot hole in this in this film it, I mean, it helps drive along the rest of the movie, but yeah, it changes the rules up. And it changes the rules in its own film. That's yeah. the thing. If, if... Well, there's a complaint, for sure. I, I didn't even think about that. Schuster shows up. He's like, uh, let me just have that script for a couple pages <laughs> real quick. I need to fuck this thing up real quick. Well, she lucked out, because if they hadn't forgot, she would have been fucked at that point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You had one job. Don't let the kids get murdered. That's it. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Like the, the bar was extremely low for old Maggie and she really dropped the ball here. <laughs> this part's really cool though, too. 
where she has the like realization of who she is. Oh yeah. Oh, you know, Robert England is like, oh, hell yes. I get to be in this movie without makeup on. This is going to be the greatest thing ever. If you only knew. <laughs> <laughs> Guaranteed he's like, oh, hell yes. Write a couple more. Like when he was in with when he was with all the maniacs in part five and he's down there, you can just see it in his eyes that he is relishing every second of screen time. <laughs> He's, he's a classically seen, trained actor. Like he's, I, I loved, he's like a theater actor. Like he, that's what he loves. Like that's why this role is so amazing because his body movements and the way he carries himself is almost fifty percent of the character. The way he stands, the way he looks, the way he nods his head—all of that couldn't be done by somebody else. And they already proved that in Freddy Part and Freddy's Revenge. They are, they had to try to have a stunt double. It's terrible. Have y'all seen the first episode of Freddy's Dead? Or not, Fre- God, Freddy's Nightmares? <laughs> yes. Yeah, the No More Mr. Nice Guy. Um, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you you would be surprised how many fans have not seen that. Um, as low budget as it was, it was a really fun episode. Like, it's cool to see that backstory play out. Well, it's they directed by it Toby bit. Hooper. A lot of people don't realize that it's directed by Toby Hooper. They call it the unofficial canon prequel to Nightmare. Because anytime anybody talks about how they could do another Nightmare film without Robert, I always say, they could do a prequel. They could do the Springwood Slasher. And everybody always brings up that episode. And I'm like, yeah, but but expand upon that episode, you know? Mm-hmm. It is a really good episode. The rest of I, the series is shit. <laughs> yeah, I had that VHS for a while of, uh, of the first episode. And uh, burnt down when I lost my house in '09, mm. and uh, God, I lost so many books and posters. And sad. I'm so sorry, That's Josh. So I Josh, the uh, Freddy vs. Jason uh, book that you read, where they have the prologue for. for, for that story for Freddy. That's what they should have had as for a prequel, because they go so deep into Freddy's like origin in the boiler room with his victims and stuff yeah. that's excellent if you haven't seen read that page you definitely need to to check into it's good i definitely will i'm gonna look into this now too like all the different books and stuff i it's do you guys watch fan movie. films and stuff oh yeah, oh, yeah. have you oh, seen yeah. the confessions of fred krueger yes. yeah i want i watched you and uh deandra comment do this oh, yeah, that's, on right, it. that's right that's right you that's scared right. the living shit out of me because i was like raining and i was running outside and i would like turn the corner and i would like be hearing a part in the film where he's like creepy <laughs> as hell and then i would get terrified i was seriously i was out there running scared and josh you've done the same crap because i've listened to your books and you'll have lightning uh exploding in the background and stuff and i'll I look like a crazy man when I'm out there. They probably think I'm nuts. They're like, who no. the hell is this guy running around the block again listening to freaking horror movie <laughs> commentary and book book? Podcast? My kids got me to play Five Nights at Freddy's one time, and the first jump scare, I jumped out of my computer chair and started running in place. And uh, <laughs> I don't understand how kids can play that. It is so scary. <laughs> I know it's coming. and it, it. My daughter used to call this movie the I Won't Tell Daddy movie. Oh, <laughs> she remembered this. this is the part she remembered of her telling. I that just sounds know. so creepy. I know it sounds bad. It sounds so. I was like, call it Freddy's dead. <laughs> sounds so fucking creepy. Excuse my layers. It sounds bad. I was like, don't go tell your mom <laughs> that you want to see the I won't tell daddy movie. Okay, don't don't say Freddy. I'd rather her get on to me for a Freddy movie than uh, ask those questions. This is the equivalent of Freddy's toy room. Like, my mm-hmm. toy room, podcast room, this is Freddy's toy room right here. <laughs> that little girl, her eyes bug out so big, like, what the fuck? Like, she's like, what did I just walk into? But, like, the actress, it's hilarious. Like, I laugh every time. And then here we go. <laughs> she's in the, like, oversized dress. This is the okay. only part I don't like about the movie. Like, this is one of the parts I don't like. How come? I just don't like the fact that she's dressed up like the little girl. I feel like she should very much like be in the moment where she sees herself little and interacting it. Gotcha. Like how she was in Freddy's, like she goes into Freddy's head and sees him when he's little. I feel like it should be like a prequel precursor to it. Maybe this is how Freddy views her still. 
Oh, that is a good. Like he's just like because she's obviously dreaming. So maybe this is how he's this is how he views her. So that's how he's allowing her to see herself. Yeah. I mean, who knows? I don't know. But the whole Freddy... family and everything, it makes him just like a, a bad version of Dexter in a way. I've never seen Dexter. Oh, Ooh. it's an amazing show. On Netflix. I have, I have On to Netflix. watch that. Horrible ending. Horrible last season. Great show. The books are way better, though. Way better. I'll have to add that to my queue. I just finished up um, one of my shows that I was binging. I'm totally not horror related. It's the Mindy Project, but I just finished. I just finished that, and so I'm like, I need something else to watch, and I don't have anything. So maybe I'll start Dexter. Here we go, most famous line in any Night Run Home Street film. Oh, I love it. Has an Elm Street. That's a fantastic image, that, that Elm Street sign popping up out of the road. That's great. Hell yeah. Here's dream, look, this is the Dream Warriors part. This, is, this reminds me of Taryn so much right here. In my dreams, I'm bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this was actually filmed on location at the house I grew up in, uh, in North <laughs> Bend. North. This, was, this, was the set. this was the actual set. There's my ironing board. Is that the, is that the house where you would take... Girls or whatever you were saying? No, dude. I lived in an apartment when I was like 22. I got an apartment. When my grandfather passed away, my uncle came and sold the house that I was living in because I was living with my grandpa at the time. I was like a sophomore in college. So I, they're like, hey, here's a thousand bucks. Go get an apartment. So that's what I got in the will from the house. So I went and got this terrible apartment on a terrible part of town. I think I had an oven just like that. It's the first <laughs> time I actually lit on fire. <laughs> And I was, like, trying to bring girls over and, like, oh, hey, you want to come over and, like, watch, you know, like, Freddy's Revenge, you know, like, you know, <laughs> clock in the morning because the bar just closed. Did you guys <laughs> ever watch Salute Your Shorts on Nickelodeon? Yes. Are you kidding? Does yes. that guy not look like he would be Donkey Lips' his dad? Oh. <laughs> My oh. favorite episode of Salute Your Shorts was either Zeke the Plumber or the um, Water Balloon episode where they're playing Capture the Flag. Mm -hmm, I like that one. The Capture the Flag episode, I think. Love it. I love Slit Your Shorts, but I was more into Hey Dude. <laughs> hey Dude was good. I like because was... I always thought Brad was Zena. I thought the, <laughs> the girl who played Brad was Zena. Lucy, La so... Lucy Lawless. <laughs> yeah, I always thought she was Lucy Lawless. And My so... phone just told me that it's happy. Okay. <laughs> What's a better said, love story? It said, if I'm happy, you're happy. It's like a... <laughs> Brad <laughs> and Ted from Hey Dude. Or Ted's the best. I'm a Ted man. Or Topanga mm -hmm. and Corey from Boy Meets Topanga and Corey. <laughs> Topanga and Corey, hands down. Topanga and Corey. I, growing up, that was my favorite TV show other than Buffy the Vampire Slayer was Boy Meets World. Looks I used like to a Dick Tracy villain. Yes. <laughs> Respect. Respect. Ooh. His comment right here where he's talking about her best friend, I would... I think I would actually try to fight him as well. Yeah. She has no fear. And that's what I like about Tracy's character. 100%. She is not scared of anything. Yeah. The only thing I don't have for my Freddy books is a voice deepener. <laughs> she, when I first saw her, she was in 976 Evil, which was actually a movie that Robert England directed. So I still have never seen it. What? Really? Yeah, I've never seen it. I've not seen a whole lot of of horror films. I'm, I'm horrible. I'm um, a Wes Craven fan. Horrible. I don't know. Is it? Have you seen Fright Night? Yes. Okay, Evil. Evil from Fright Night stars in 976 Evil. He's okay. the main character. And he, like, is being raised by his aunt, I believe, or mother. And there's another... His first cousin lives in the same house. Well, the kid who's evil is, like, a really sheltered kind of a nerdy character. And his cousin is a stud. So somehow Robert England or some somebody's character, there's like this flyer for a 1-800 number to call this number and it'll help you with your future. And of course, he calls the number and all hell breaks loose. So. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna, okay, so we. I know that my husband has it. Watch um, I'm going to have to watch it this week. My, my uh, co-producer is going to be here. And so I'm going to make her watch it with me because I know she's seen it. 
It's good. It's worth. It's worth. I mean, it's not amazing, but it, anything with evil from Fright Night in it is fine with me. Well, and it has Robert and Tracy in it. Yeah, so. they're all. <laughs> they're all in it. Yeah. I love how in the first Hatchet we finally got a uh, Kane Hodder versus Robert England. I've still never seen Hatchet either. <laughs> Oh, it's a good movie, I and watched... I love Danielle Harris when she takes over the role of it. Like that's what everyone tells me. They're like, "How can you not?" She's in Hatchet too, and I'm like, "Oh, I know." God, Yavicano <laughs> just beats the shit out of him with the stat. You don't usually see Freddie going after a grown up, but you know, I guess when things are, you know, he's getting to the bottom of the barrel now. <laughs> he's... Yeah, he went through his goodies too fast. Opened up all of his presents too fast. He totally pulls a James Bond villain here and tells Doc his entire plan before he <laughs> he monologues the entire scene here. I love this though. I love how he like goes to, uh, but nothing will kill me. I use this gift more than anything where he's like, hmm. <laughs> Okay, look at this. Okay, go to his hand. It's wet. Watch. He's going to put his fingers out. His hand's still wet from the from the thing before. Watch. Watch his hand. It's still wet. No, no. He's going to flip it back. Right here, it's wet. Then he's going to stretch his hand out, and it's still going to be wet from the shot prior. Here we go. There you go. Oh, my God. Do you know what I'm I talking about? I've never noticed That's... that before. I've never I, noticed I, that I before. I notice it every time. That is it's cool. when he threw his hand like this, he probably threw the prosthetic right off, like he released yeah. it. Yes, because that's one continuous shot, obviously. Yeah. That was good. I've seen this movie so many times that I like pay attention to things in the background sometimes. Mm. I really hate red and green. <laughs> <laughs> That is the alarm clock from hell. Look at it. Oh my god. I'd have that look on my face too if that was my yeah. alarm clock. We'd buy him a new sweater and he'll yeah. like us. <laughs> I love that people like talk about this film and they talk about Freddy's dead and stuff and they talk about like rule breaking and stuff like that but like do they not remember in the first nightmare Nancy takes out Freddie out of his dream? Like One, that's one hundred. Like I always say that's how Nightmare Two was able to happen. She trapped him in the house. And so that's how they call back to the house, why they always call back, because he's trapped there. Yeah. And so he Jesse allowed him to be a vessel to get out. So I feel like he's learned and evolved through each film. And so we're at the point now, this progression in part six, like this is just the natural progression. Like She's going to take him out again, like the, the original. It just makes sense as to why they got to kill him in the real world. Yeah. Like, they're and just not... completing Nancy's plan. Yeah. Definitely. And, and if they stuck to every rule, then, I mean, all they would need to do is, like, use holy water and turn their back on him. I mean, it's just, they had to go for something new. And... Uh, I like how it's like it kind of circles back to the beginning in a way. Yeah. Get ready. We're going to have to be putting on our 3D glasses. Oh, uh, I thought we were doing this part in our dreams. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Seeing an insight into Freddy's brain is uh, super interesting, and I wish they would have explored it more. Here we go. Here we go. So all this is supposed to be 3D. Yes, from here on out, right? Mm -hmm. Although we don't have the three, we're not playing the 3D version. I am. Are you really? Yeah. I should have thrown my 3D version on.
It's like one of those 3D posters from the 90s where you have to squint your eyes and then like readjust your eyes back <laughs> to like see the, the image of the sailboat in Mallrats. All right, I gotta take them off. <laughs> Starting to mess with my eyes because it's not 3D. <laughs> so Freddie obviously is knows she's in his brain. Then obviously from that little scene right there. Apparently, it's painful going in there. I know he's like, "This sucks." The shoes on the other foot, bitch. <laughs> I always thought it'd be so cool if this was a roller coaster ride at like. Uh, theme park. That's pretty cool. If they had a horror themed like theme park, that would be the greatest thing ever. Yeah. There's his brain. That hurts. Looks like she's in the Ghostbusters firehouse. Yeah. <laughs> It, yeah, we're like, it looks like Sigourney Weaver is going to show up like any minute on top of that roof. Or the Secret of the Ooze Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles subway. Oh yeah. my god, I wanted to live there so bad Me when too. I was a kid. We just watched that this morning. I was like, yes. God. There's this guy on YouTube, uh, James Rolfe, who uh, did a party years ago and he made a video where they tried all the different types of pizzas that the turtles would eat on the cartoon. <laughs> That's awesome. Like like hot fudge and anchovies and stuff like that. And uh, there's a video about it. They try every single one ever on the cartoon. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, they powered through it. I could tell they were getting sick. Oh. So now this is why this is what I don't like about the film. This is the one thing that I never liked about um Freddie's dead. I don't want to feel bad for Freddie. Exactly. Like I was this kid. I, well, not this kid. Not killing the <laughs> animal. <laughs> Let me take that back. Um, I was like, <laughs> I, I to leave now. <laughs> yeah, like I was not the that, but I was the bullied kid growing up. And I just think about a lot of like, you know, that could have shaped who he is. So of course he's killing these people. Like I'm rooting for him then because he was treated horrible growing up. Yes, like now you're rooting for him, but. I don't want to feel bad for him. I just want to be scared. I'd rather be him be doing this just because he's demented as opposed to the, the nature versus nurture thing. Like he was nurtured into this condition. I want it to just be, he was psycho from the beginning. Yeah. He just is that way because that's what he is. Right. Well, Not because this, of our guy is. this is Alice Cooper. Uh <laughs> I know, you know it is. I was just about to go to The The guy here says he really got into the character, wanted to really be, you know, like he really wanted to be young Freddy here. Yeah. Uh, took advice from Robert and everything. Isn't it? I do know in one of the books they talk about Mr. Underwood. This is Mr. Underwood. So they do talk about him and how he took in Freddy and raised him as his own. And so Mr. Yeah. Underwood was the only one who was like a father to Freddy. I do know that from the books. Uh, and Paige, yeah, he did a bang a up job too. He did a great job, Paige. Uh, Mr. Underwood, father of the year. Yes. Great, great job there, bud. <laughs> like, here you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that was a cool effect. Yeah. Uh, at least it's not blatant like Friday the 13th, three, where they like had to resort to like juggling into the camera. And... Yeah. <laughs> They created a whole character just for him to have 3D situations on the film. You want some cocaine? Give it to a boy. See, like this. I wish that it would have been this in the beginning. Not her dressed up in the pajamas. Like her just seeing it. Okay, that's even with the 3D effects, it's giving me a headache. Yeah. What is? Is he just choking her or banging her head against something? I could never. Is it? The, is he banging he's her head choked. against the tree? Okay. No, he's choking her. Yeah, he's, he's choking, choking the. Her. He's just choking her out. Here it comes. Freddie's wearing a red shirt under that green polo. 
this is what my daughter would call the movie right here. I do like the aspect of Freddie having a daughter, though. It kind of explains a lot, actually, because he's like got this sick relationship with females throughout the entire franchise. The whole it teenager also, aspect makes you forget that he was a predator of children, you know? Yeah. That's what the remake is what when they start, when they lean so heavily into the pedophile aspect of the remake, I was just like, I can't, I just, it turned me off so much. I think those because, are dodged. You can connect on your, you don't have to have that painted out, you know, no, the I knew, windows already there. That's all they needed to do. Exactly. Yeah, that's why Wes took it out of the original thing. Wes took it out because there was uh, a real... Stroker. Oh my gosh, that thing's the same thing too. I think Bram Stoker every time. Bram Stoker Kruger. Oh, his head? Yes. yes. <laughs> I think that I always swear I'm the only person. I thought I was the only one who always nope. says that. Okay, nope. thank God. <laughs> Turn around again. He'll be there next time. What is Tracy right. doing? Like a steering wheel? What is that? It's like a Gaia statue. <laughs> like a... Where she has all the arms and stuff. I'm like, you're going to knock him out with that. Yeah. So is this all the weapons and stuff they've confiscated from troubled teens? Is that what this is? Because Jesus, <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. There are some troubled kids in that area. And the like handcuffs. The, okay. That bat There's, is like straight out of the Dream Warriors poster from '87. Mm-hmm. One hundred percent. All we need now is Jeffrey Dean Morgan. You know, I simply oh, look, cannot look. decide. There's the thing that she was just holding. All of a sudden, it's in the in the case instead yes. of her holding it. The little <laughs> steering wheel deal. They're yeah. Common. They're they're a common weapon. Don't you know that? <laughs> You're too good of a fighter, so you have to hold the shittiest weapon of all time to like make the fight even. <laughs> I'm gonna fight him with a candlestick holder. My mother told me to pick the very best one. And you, <laughs> you are, are gonna find it. out who it is six <laughs> months later. That was a hell of a cliffhanger. See, wouldn't it have been cool if he was laying there burnt, like, in pain from all the burns? <laughs> yeah. Man, he's still plotting. He's still very much in control right here. Yeah. I love getting to see Robert play Freddy without the makeup. Yeah, I do like that aspect. Cool Freddy here. Because it shows that he at one point was a human. Oh, definitely. Uh, this is very interesting. I wish I could have seen more, actually. Yeah, that's why I want to see like a prequel series, because I want to see the Springwood slasher. I want to be tormented. I want to be scared that he, you know, who's his next victim going to be? Yeah. Doc's only weakness, doors. Yeah. <laughs> you were like five, okay? You don't know. She might have been a bitch, okay? <laughs> Let me kill you so you can take over. Yeah. Yeah, fuck John Doe. (laughs) We don't even know what his name is throughout the whole movie. He dies not knowing who he is. Right. It's it's Ben Tramer. (laughs) It's a Halloween joke there. (laughs) Yes. Just tastes like pizza, probably. Mm. 
Well, she knows what to do. It's in her blood. No, no she knows what to do. She, no. Oh, knows. <laughs> it's a dad joke. I, I, <laughs> you I get to do dad that. joke dad. territory. <laughs> His hand got broken apart so bad that it's actually physically pulling apart from the rest of his hand, and he's just putting it back like it's no big deal. It's like those bendable figures we'd get as kids. <laughs> like, we're just, like, bend. Let me give you a hand. You ever tried putting a glove on with one hand? It's going to be a bitch. Yeah, I feel sorry for him all over again now. Oh. <laughs> Girl over there just keeps. She ahead. should have led with the crossbow, probably. Yeah, right. That's yeah. what I was She's just over there. She, even after he's dead, she's just throwing grenades under there. <laughs> <laughs> He's pissed, but he's kind of admiring her work at the same time with that glare. Yeah, I love it. He's like, put it on. <laughs> That's my girl. <laughs> yeah, he's like, this really sucks, but I'm kind of proud right now. That wasn't very nice. Oh, this is so gross. Gotta put it on now because she's putting it on. Oh, no. I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna go pinky. I love when she goes. <laughs> Okay, time out. So there was a stick of dynamite in the confiscation <laughs> locker. <laughs> they just, they didn't even gangs. the people in charge didn't even take the wick off. Or the, they just <laughs> leave it completely with the fuse. Yeah. <laughs> so it's probably yeah. Maggie. She's the one who gave him the keys to drive back to the damn center without like the worst counselor of all times. And here we go. They're gonna say the title in the in the credits right here. And oh, I love she's about to credits. say it. She's gonna say it. Freddie's dead. My legs asleep. Yeah, let's see. Best ending okay. credits to a series ever right here. For sure. Nostalgia chills. The I saw this, one. this film is very Rocky Five. I've never seen Rocky. I've never seen any of the Rocky films. I've never seen Rocky. I saw, I've seen the Hulk Hogan scene and that's it. From like really? part four or whatever it is. Just because I'm a, I was a wrestler and a Hulk Hogan fan when I was a kid. I love it. I loved um, WWF back when it was WWF and not WWE. I liked WCW until they got fought out. I, uh, I wrestled for 10 years and then a guy messed up and broke my back. Hmm. But it was my love for enter like uh, acting and wrestling and entertaining that is one of the reasons I enjoy my channel. I get to voice act and everything. That's awesome. Uh, the Dream Warriors book, by the way, is based is like an amalgam of all the different scripts for Dream Warriors. It's uh, it's really more like Wes Craven's script than the final script. I love Wes Craven's script. Like we did, um, we dissected his script on our channel. And I love his script. I love what they did with it. I love the end battle, how Nancy actually has a battle with him instead of just succumbing to a trick. And and because Nancy wouldn't succumb to a trick, she's smarter than that. She spends the whole film plotting against him, and then she gets fooled by him at the end. It just doesn't make sense. But I definitely am going to have to read the Dream Warriors book. And then Taryn like gets like eaten by her grandmother or whatever. In, in the book, it's 
She like the, gets absorbed into her grandmother. The the <laughs> wizard master character is Laredo, right? Is that right, yeah. Josh? Laredo, yeah. Laredo. and he, Freddy turns into like a dragon in the mm-hmm. fight, which yeah. is freaking awesome. There's yeah. no puppet scene though. He just like all Freddy does is just drag that guy out and throws him in front of a bus. <laughs> <laughs> just no suspense at all. It's just like no. we're getting this over with. We're moving on to the next kid. I love the film we got though. I think Dream Warriors is perfect. I think yeah. that it represents so much. And like uh, I'm just watching the Dream Warriors scenes on screen right now. <laughs> this is your big break in TV. Welcome to prime time, bitch. <laughs> One of the best the, ever. The Mark Patton meat suit scene. That is pretty damn good for the for yeah. special effects that is phenomenal if they could have done this all in 3d that would have been awesome i just smile when nancy comes on screen <laughs> like i'm like yay I, I love the throwback to that in new nightmare the the steps being melt yes. like melting underneath her so new nightmare is my favorite out of all of them that's um, fine too. i mean i would say dream warriors is my favorite freddy film because I don't see New Nightmare as a Nightmare on Elm Street film. I see it as a standalone. Um, but I definitely, it's my favorite. My favorite scene of any film that has ever been created is the highway scene of West Craven's New Nightmare, where she's like running and she gets hit by the car. And that whole scene is just amazing and badass. I love that film. You guys should do West Craven's New Nightmare next and have Deandra on. Oh, yeah, hers we too. Ought to. Uh, thank you so much for watching the movie with us. Uh, we're going to, we're going to dissect it a little bit here and thank you all so much for listening, uh, watching along, listening along, whatever you did. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, all that's left now is the credits. So we're going to close that out. And, uh, so how many times have you seen this movie now? Are you keeping count? Uh, I just watched it last weekend. So this month, it's probably the third time I've watched it. (laughs) Alex, we're going, we're going, I'm definitely 40 or 50 times at least I've seen this movie. That's fair. Definitely. That's fair. Um, I actually enjoyed it more than I was expecting to. Uh, I think just the older I get, the more, uh, I don't know, the more I try to take everything apart, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when I'm watching it with people, I seem to enjoy it more than when I'm sitting there by myself dissecting it and stuff. And, uh, when you when you hear so many people crapping on a movie, it's hard for that not to rub off a little bit. Yeah, but then when you watch it with people who like enjoy the series and enjoy the films for what they are, it makes it fun for you and it makes you remember like, oh, this is why I liked it. This is why I was into it. Exactly. Exactly. Freddy's Dead is like a piece of pizza. It's like you've had better pieces of pizza, <laughs> but it's still pizza at the end of the day. So I'm totally fine good. with it. Yeah, There's only good. one... There's only one bad pizza, and uh, that's that? Hawaiian, Hawaiian pizza. Oh, don't tell Nicole that. She Hawaiian is a must in our house. Like every time we get pizza, for sure. No pineapple doesn't go on pizza. <laughs> I've never. I say I'm a vegetarian, so I've never had pineapple or ham or any of that stuff on a pizza. So I couldn't even couldn't tell you. Cheese pizza's good. Yeah, cheese is Paige, classic. Pizza. Paige, had, would you would you be open to soul pizza? It depends on whose <laughs> souls are on the pizza. <laughs> Politician souls. Right. Like, I don't want to ingest that. So. Spencer's father. Spencer's father, no. Donald Trump himself. Would you eat a pizza with Spencer's father on it? No. I would feed it to a dog. <laughs> it, would, it would be expired already. Yeah. Like, uh, I'd be scared because and- it'd be orange. So I wouldn't oh. think it would be safe to eat. <laughs> And that's not me getting political on my podcast here. That's just an opinion on a human being. It's just funny. Um, Sarah, uh, I don't, I don't want to go into too much detail, but y'all hear about that thing with Sasha Baron Cohen? Just yeah, a yes or no. Yes or yes or yeah. no. Yes. Okay. No. Yeah. Just Google his name and it'll be like the top news. It's pretty, it's okay. pretty funny. I'll have to see it. I'm wondering if maybe that's what was trending when I was on Twitter earlier, but I didn't get a chance to check everything. I saw a Sasha was trending, but I always think Sasha or Malia Obama when I see Sasha trending. So I'm like, I don't want to see no bad news on those kids. <laughs> so I was like, please let those kids be the good ones out of all the president's kids. It was probably it was probably the Sasha Baron thing for sure because it was okay. a, a lot of people uh, getting defensive about it. But uh, so 
what's the next movie, Alex? Uh, I don't know. You know what? We should come up with like a list of two or three films and let people vote on it. Okay, yeah, we'll do that. I we got know. two weeks till we film again, yeah. so yeah. yeah, we'll throw a new nightmare on there because that was a good suggestion. DeAndre actually, yeah, no, DeAndre actually emailed me and said if we do do that, that she definitely wants to do that. So awesome, um, she's a good one who she'd be a really good one to have for a new nightmare because she has a lot of insight. It's her favorite of all of the films as well too, so she would have like a ton of insight on New Nightmare. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It would be awesome. It would be like Freddy 101. I'd totally be down. Yeah. And it, it was it was a lot of fun to not be so cynical <laughs> uh, watching this. Like, I'm in my mid-30s, and I used to... I feel like I used to enjoy the movies a lot more, but lately, I've with doing the books and everything, it's reinvigorating slashers for me, and I'm seeing the movies a lot more. So thank you, Alex, for this podcast, man. This is a lot of fun. Yeah, and, you're uh, welcome. Thank you for doing it with me. Yeah, and thank you, Paige, for coming on. I uh, really appreciate it. We hope you'll come back for another one sometime. I will um, come back for any single one of them. Anyone, thank you guys for having me on. It has been so much fun. Any movie you want me to come back on, I will. Awesome. Oh, you got it. Hey, we got, we got her on record. She's saying she'll do another one. So You should do wax work. Ooh. Okay. Have you seen I've, Waxwork? Yes, and I've seen part two, Lost in Time. Me too. I, I was a Waxwork guy. Fright Night, Waxwork, Nightmare on Elm Streets, and Return of the Living Dead, one and two. We mm-hmm. would rent those on loop over and over and over again. I used to have the VHS of Waxwork where you pop the sides and the tape pops out of the case. Mm, I love movie, Waxwork. Waxwork, the scene that bugs me, is the scene where his girlfriend is like getting whipped on the back. And she like loves it, and it b- bugs. It's it like makes me uncomfortable. It's it is one of the most. <laughs> it's horrible. I don't even know how to explain it. Like it's like a sexual awakening scene yeah. for a girl to watch. Like girls watch that and they're like, oh, <laughs> okay, is this how it's supposed to happen? <laughs> so what's no, a movie? Such a movie. No. What's a movie that you guys could rip on from beginning to end and not feel bad about it? Hmm. I don't even know. Return of the go- Living Dead Part 2 would be I've very, very that. easy to do that. You've never seen Return of the Living Dead 2? Have you seen one? Mm-mm. Oh, Paige, I'm mm-hmm. telling you, it's Return of the Living Dead is like one of my favorite horror movies ever. It's the perfect blend of comedy and seriousness. Okay, it's I'll have very to watch good. It. We'll have to do a double feature episode sometime in the future and bring her back and make her watch Return of the Living Dead 1 and 2 for the first time on the podcast. (laughs) She's going to like, she's going to go from the first one loving it. And then you're going to go into part two and you're going to be like, what the hell am I (laughs) watching? Exactly. I'm down for anything. Anything I I wouldn't torture her with part three, though. Uh, No. A part three is actually not that bad, Josh. Three might be better than two. No, I mean, not gonna, not wouldn't make her watch one, two, and three in a row, like all in one sitting. Um, that I'm one, old. I probably to would digest be asleep by then. Yeah, like... two movies is a lot for me. <laughs> um, part four and five were horrible though. They they were like made for TV, and uh, I couldn't even finish watching them. Uh, but yeah, Return of the Living Dead one and two would be fun sometime, like a double feature. And uh, she said it herself, wax work. So. Uh, I'm down for Waxburg. Waxburg is one of my favorites. And well, you so, could riff uh, on that totally. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would, I'm going to have a hard time riffing on New Nightmare. It's going to kind of be like this one where it's just more having fun with the movie. But yeah. Uh, yeah. No, New Nightmare is like almost too good. There's too many. Mm-hmm. The only part that I laugh about every time I see it is when the husband is scratching his balls. <laughs> and I remember from the documentary where he's like, that's not my hand. <laughs> so I see that in my head every time they had a stunt double for his hand. Well, or he just that. said it wasn't his hands. He never said it wasn't his. So. <laughs> who, got the, who got the hero shot? Whose hand was it? Who had the hero <laughs> shot that scene? Well, good night, everybody. Thank you so much. You guys have a great night. Thank Thanks. you guys so much. It's been so much fun. Thank you for having me.